Today's topic uh, is about uh, accelerating digital transformation by using the right digital application management platform. Today, enterprises are pretty much towards the race of uh, implementing digital transformation and the whole digital transformation wave has forced a lot of enterprises to make themselves equipped with the right tools and technologies to face this digital transformation wave. While the degrees and the scale at which the transformation may happen at different enterprises, the challenges that they go through pretty much remain the same. So today's session we are going to look at uh, how an in platform approach can help towards uh, moving in the digital transformation journey and how it can overall help enterprises accelerate their transformation. So with that, uh, a quick uh, intro about Aspire. So Aspire is a, a technology services firm with a strong DNA of software engineering. Uh, and our focus areas are digital services, software engineering itself, testing and infrastructure management. So we have around uh, 1,500 plus uh, employees um, spread across uh, 120 plus customers. We are a CMO level three company with an ISO 2008 and 27001 with a global presence of uh, US, UK, Singapore and uh, Benelux, Middle East and India as well. And we are also happy to um, let you know that we are uh, getting the best place to work for uh, for the seven consecutive times. So for today's session, we have uh, two speakers. Um, so myself, I'm Janaki Jayachandran. Um, so I'm a technology uh, director. Um, so I have been uh, participating in a lot of uh, conferences and uh, I do a lot of uh, speaking around digital transformation, SaaS, um, the overall uh, platform-based approaches. And, and today, along with me, I have uh, Lokesh uh, Shanmugam, uh, who is uh, also from the digital transformation team. And uh, he brings in a lot of experience in terms of uh, architecting some of these uh, digital management platforms and uh, equipping the enterprises towards their uh, digital transformation journey. A quick uh, housekeeping instruction. Uh, so your phones are all set to mute. So if you have any questions, Please type them in the chat window that you see in the panel and uh, we'll take as many questions as possible towards the end of the session. And in case if we are not able to answer some of these questions, we will ensure we revert back to you over an email. And we'll be sharing this uh, presentation as well to all the registered participants. So you'll be getting a copy of this presentation. All right. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, get started with uh, the key elements that are required in a digital transformation for enterprises. What is driving these uh, digital transformation? Right? So that from a need perspective, if we look at, enterprises have a, a very strong need today to evaluate, um, evaluate a lot of things um, which will help them do better. Right, which involves, for example, streamlining a lot of their workflow as to how they operate as a company. Uh, so you need to be able to quickly evaluate the way how things are going to be working for you. Right. So which also leads to a lot of experimentation to be done within enterprises uh, because there's, there's no uh, a straight single silver bullet at times. So you may have to uh, do a little bit of iteration to figure out what works best uh, for an enterprise. And in today's competitive world, you need to be unique, you need to be different, which means you need to try something new that others have not tried. So a lot of experimentation uh, is required. So it's not about failing, it's about failing fast and then learning from it and being able to turn around things uh, in a quick time frame. The other big challenge that uh, enterprises are seeing is um, establishing the connect. Connect to the customers, connect to their uh, vendors connect to their partners. Now, this ecosystem becomes a very a critical success factor for enterprises. So, you need to be able to really understand the the customers' um, 
emotions in terms of how they interact with your system uh, what is the buying cycle how the whole customer's journey happens to be with the enterprise uh, in terms of their transactions so again by domain this whole thing changes if it's a retail uh, if it's an e-commerce then it's a different aspect if it's more of uh, b2c then uh, for for example retail banking and things like that will be slightly different but then the, the common denominator stands at understanding the customer behavior understanding the customer analytics uh, becomes critical having that last mile connectivity with them plays a key role for that and the other important aspect is with so many solutions in place with so many systems within the enterprises there is a need to be continuously aligning uh, these systems and solutions based on the business outcome and today a lot of things are dynamic in nature so uh, continuous a mechanism to have a continuous alignment of these various systems and solutions with the, with the end objective of the overall business outcome becomes a very important aspect as well now this being said uh, as the driving factors what is stopping enterprises today so where exactly is the bottleneck for these enterprises right so if you look at a, a quick survey from the cmo.com majority of the, the feedback or the respondents have rated the internal it systems as the third biggest obstacle which uh, is preventing them towards moving to the digital transformation or at least they are they are not giving the pace to reach the digital transformation now, so that being said so what exactly uh, does it transform to right so where exactly is even it finding the problems right so one common uh, challenge um, that it has in today's world is the lack of vision right so it's very important the groups within the enterprises are clearly aligned towards a central goal of what they are working towards so if the goal of uh, an enterprise for example for a, a e-commerce company the goal is to um, increase the, the sales by an x percentage or they want to increase the revenue stream through let's say a mobile uh, app then that goal has to be transformed and communicated and aligned within every single department and sub department so that each of them are equipped to be able to meet that particular goal but in some cases that vision sometimes doesn't get clearly translated into and hence each of the departments they try to operate in a silo thus leading to failures in some cases connected to that is the decentralized information so the information like in this case how each department assumes the goal to be so there is no one single place where the information is available for everybody to interact um, like the silo nature of these different modules and entities creates the decentralized manner so something has to unite them pull them together so you need to have one common ground for these teams the other big challenge is the continuous involvement in the technology front and today technology has been going in a, in a breakneck speed and a lot of things keep changing and which is an another big challenge for the it right so in terms of adopting these technologies there is a learning curve there is a, a, a time uh, that it takes for implementing these technologies but then by the time it's done then there is already a new technology in place so how do you tackle these things um, you need to enable the it to tackle some of these things the other big challenge for large organizations in particular is their distributed uh, way of working so either they are distributed across different um, states or they are distributed by countries different regions so that again brings in a lot of complexity as to how these different teams coherently work together towards a single goal and, and also the need for experimentation which we saw um, the, the teams should be given the flexibility and, and liberty to be able to experiment and then learn and then being able to move things faster so we cannot just conclude with one outcome 
But the final thing is on the, the whole infrastructure today, um, particularly with the introduction of cloud, um, has simplified to a great extent of resolving some of these infrastructure requirements within the enterprise. Uh, because that, at least at one point in time, was a huge limiting factor as to how much um, an enterprise can do. But today, if the, the IT teams are approaching with the right um, a, a cloud transformation plan, then um, some of these infrastructure limitations can be easily resolved. But that, that is one of the challenges uh, more like that um, enterprises will have to deal with. So where do these custom applications come into picture? So what, where exactly the digital management, application management uh, should even come into picture? Now, enterprises have two sets of applications, I would say. One, uh, what we call the courts, right? out, of, out of the box applications, which are those the big ERPs or the various SaaS systems that they consume and the integration requirement between these systems. Well, that is one part of the story. But to achieve a true uh, digital transformation, this alone may not be sufficient. So there are a lot of things that needs to be done within the enterprises. Uh, for example, like the automation part to be done. So there could be several uh, manual steps that could potentially be automated in an enterprise. So when you automate such kind of processes or such kind of a manual steps, they end up building these applications, right? What do you call the custom applications? So either it could be a very unique requirement of that particular enterprise, and hence you may not find an, uh, a ready-made software in the market to achieve that, or like I said, it could be increasing the automation to bring down some of your manual efforts. It could be a, a business process workflow that you would like to streamline uh, by having this uh, application in place. Um, could be some quick tools that you build to improve productivity of a certain segment within the enterprises. It right? could be from an operation perspective or a supply chain perspective. And in some cases, it could be simply consolidating uh, different sources of data and then being able to present that um, for, uh, for actions, for decision making. And that is another example. Uh, in, in some cases, it could also be something that you want to give it back to the customer. Like in the earlier slide, we saw about connecting to the customer, being able to understand their analytics and being able to help them, guide them. So to that extent, you may want to provide some of these uh, applications as portals or as a, a touch point um, to your customers or could, could be to your partners, to your vendors, so that everybody in the system can see the same information, like centralized information, a common goal, right? All of that can be achieved. Right? So these are some of the reasons why uh, enterprises build these custom applications. And in a typical enterprise, if you look at the, the number of these custom applications are, are huge. So you, in no time, uh, you would end up building a lot of such custom applications, um, particularly if you are in the journey of digital transformation, you are going to be building a lot of such custom applications. So how do you manage these custom applications? What are the challenges that these this approach uh, brings into enterprises? There are two sets of challenges, I would say. One from a technical standpoint, the other one is from an overall management standpoint, managing the, the whole operations. Technically, what happens is uh, many times multiple teams are involved in building these applications. And in a large enterprise, you may have distributed teams and they could be um, working with their different managers. So they end up choosing technologies that they are more comfortable with, so which means the enterprise level, you end up having applications that are completely diversified, right? There are built in disparate technologies and different architectures, different patterns. There is no uniformity. Right? That's a big technical uh, nightmare for the IT when it comes to managing these applications. And very key uh, things like, for example, how the whole authentication works within, the, within these custom applications and uh, how is the authorization taking place? Is the centralized authorization? And tomorrow, if 
the enterprise or the IT decides to bring in a policy change or a process change in terms of how the authentication or authorization has to happen, how easy it is to incorporate into these diversified applications, right? So that becomes a big, uh, again, a, a challenge for the IT. Now, some of these applications, if you want to take it to customer, how, how do I do that? that? That's another strategy because many times these applications are built for internal use, but then later on, the enterprise might realize that you could also take it to a customer. So you may want to expose this uh, to external customer, which means it becomes a different ball game altogether. Uh, so you, security becomes suddenly an important aspect. Um, the availability of the system becomes very critical. A load of the system starts changing because now you're opening it for more usage, right? So the whole, the way it is deployed, the way it is organized, everything kind of changes. So how do I give access to my applications and how do I control the access as well? Right? And there's always the pressure in terms of how quickly can I reach to market? So that being said on the technical side of it, how do we manage this whole setup, right? So with the, so many non-standard custom applications in place, so there's no uniformity in terms of administering these applications. So if I want to make any uh, base level changes, then it becomes uh, extremely high budget, high effort, high risk project uh, to go and touch like 50 applications, 60 applications, and ensure that nothing else is breaking and the whole system still works fine. So that's a big, big task for the IT teams. And also having a single pane view or control of these applications and their visibility, particularly when you deal with multi-org units. Right? So for example, if you're an enterprise spread across different departments might be using these applications, uh, different uh, regions, different branches, sub-branches, sub-departments, so how do you get a visibility from an IT perspective and how do you manage the access of these applications across these various units? And, and at the user level, how do you ensure each person gets the right access and they don't get to see something that they are not supposed to see? Right? So overall, being able to keep up with the pace of the business agility and being able to match up with the speed uh, is a, a very big key challenge. So how do we address some of these things? How do we take care of these challenges, which could help towards addressing the uh, addressing the solutions for these challenges, right? So there are four uh, key areas that uh, has to be looked upon in order to build this solution. So when we say um, a digital management application platform, it's nothing but predominantly taking care of these four areas, which would give that flexibility, give that power to the IT to be able to uh, help in the whole digital transformation journey, right? So there is this accelerator piece, which will help you to build applications faster, right? And being able to uh, achieve time to market at a faster pace. Where is the governance part of it? deals with how do you administer the entire gamut of applications you have and how do you uh, take care of some of the process related aspects complaints related aspects right how do you get a view a, a holistic view a single pane view of the entire uh, application inventory right so that forms your governance part of it and security uh, by itself is a, is a big area so like we talked about the authentication part of it, authorization part of it, um, who gets access to what level, what level of access a customer gets and what level access a, a vendor gets in. And between customers also the access could vary sometimes. And um, sometimes there is a, a single sign on required. There is a multi-factor authentication that comes into picture. So all the security needs of these applications um, gets addressed under the the security segment and the last piece is something that um, very interestingly uh, today some of the enterprises are, are trying to cash in on this digital transformation wave uh, by making some of their internal applications or services uh, as a, a revenue stream for the company 
so they try to monetize some of these services um, that way uh, they could also create some additional revenues for the company so let's say you have an internal application and uh, you would like to take that to uh, your um, users to your customers a simple example could be let's say there is a, a company an enterprise that deals with uh, consulting for on or on the risk management aspect they do a risk consulting for companies now this is an enterprise where their core business is consulting and they they are specialist in that but what they also do in the process is they build one of their internal systems or internal applications for tracking these risks right so they decide to take this application outside and then have it available for some of their customers and they could give this more like a subscription based service in addition to the consulting services that they are doing so it's now becoming a consulting plus a software service revenue stream for them right so that's an example of how some of the enterprises are looking at uh, cashing in on so yes internal applications um, to create this monetization opportunity now all applications may not fit into this category but then there could be some applications or some services that could definitely be uh, monetized which means you need to have the right platform and the avenues infrastructure in place to be able to do that So getting into uh, the actual accelerator part of it, uh, there is one big challenge that many many enterprises go through around uh, um, the rapid development of applications. Right? So there is always a a, a combination of uh, op options you have where you, you want to build something very fast or something you want to build it with a control. Now there are certain applications which are very simple, straightforward vanilla type applications, where um, it's more a cookie cutter approach. So nothing unique or no no complexity involved. So in which case you can definitely go for a rapid application tool. But then some of the things that we talked about in terms of security, in terms of being able to operate this application across different org units being able to monetize it so those elements brings in additional complexity to your application which means they are not normal vanilla applications anymore right so one of the key things that enterprise should look at is classifying the application inventory or what they are trying to build and then apply the right approach towards developing these applications so some of the straightforward simple applications can very well be built using uh, rad tools but then when it comes to uh, having this control with them uh, for building some of the complex applications, then that becomes a very crucial factor. So what are the things that drive this control to them, right? So one is the multi-tenant architecture need. Um, so this is a very uh, important topic again, coming up within the digital transformation where, like I said, being able to offer a service across to many customers right so the moment you do that then you start providing a software or application which needs to have the multi-tenant capability within it and you don't want to as a strategy be relied on a particular vendor right so you don't want to have a vendor lock-in by choosing one particular technology or one particular platform rather you like to uh, have the flexibility where you can move between clouds, between platforms, right? You don't have to necessarily get stuck with one platform forever. So that's another strategical thought uh, that decides between to retain the control or to go for a, a, a rad kind of an approach, like right? cloud neutrality and things like that. But also from a security perspective, how complex the security aspects are required, particularly when you deal with multi-tenancy, and uh, the security norms could vary from um, unit to unit or to customer to customer then then the whole thing starts becoming a bit complex in which case you need that level of technical control to be able to achieve it and also some of these uh, the rad tools 
do not provide you a great level of options when it comes to third party tool integrations or or um, usage of such tools so it comes with a cookie cutter approach so you just have to go with what it comes with um, so that's another aspect you need to look at so it's basically um, to decide the right code platform rather than whether it's a, a, a rapid platform or a local platform rather you need to ensure that you are able to balance both these aspects and then make the right decision towards building these applications. So these are some of the uh, key aspects uh, to be considered when you are building an accelerator. Um, so basically today all the applications are pretty much built on microservice architecture. So you need to have uh, the application scope as well as the API scope clearly isolated. And more importantly, being able to support the non-functional requirements as well. Like what you see at the bottom of the slide is pretty much the key non-functional requirements that uh, really have to be supported in, in some of these applications. Like we talked about the security, the multi-tenancy architecture, um, being able to configure the application according to the org unit that is consuming it, then configurability becomes a very key aspect of it. And, and, and the whole um, performance of the application becomes a key aspect as well and how it can scale uh, today with the cloud deployment and things like that auto scaling and features like that become uh, very critical so the accelerator is something that should take care of these aspects of it which means the developers or the id team will be able to latch on to this and being able to build applications faster again these are some of the key features um, particularly around um, having more templates code, being able to support a, a workflow module to streamline or depict some of the workflow processes, notifications that are being sent across, um, could be separately um, built as notification engines, right? As well as have some reusable UI controls and uh, taking care of non-functional requirements. Now there is also this, uh, a lot of options today in terms of the, um, what we call visual development tools um, that could help in terms of building these applications, right? Or in other words, called local platforms. Uh, like I said, this local platforms are an excellent uh, option when you deal with uh, straightforward, simple applications. But then when you are looking at uh, a slightly complex application, right? A medium to a high complexity applications, then you start getting uh, challenges around this, right? For example, like the the vendor lock-in itself becomes a critical factor. You don't want that uh, to be tied into one particular uh, vendor dependency, like multi-tenancy support uh, may not be there. So this is some of the um, aspects that needs to be taken care of. Now, the alternate to this is the accelerator approach, which could really provide you the both the advantages, right? It doesn't take you in a, in a high speed, but at the same time, it doesn't um, put you restrictions as to what you could do. So it's somewhere in midway and hence becomes a, an interesting option. We talked about the configurability aspect as well. So these are the various uh, configurability aspects that needs to be considered while building uh, an application, particularly if you're building an application or a service that is going to be monetized to the end users, right? So you have the whole subscription uh, part of it could vary from customer to customer, right? So you may want to offer this service. Um, so which means you, you may offer it as different subscription versions, different license models and things like that. So that could change. Um, you may charge them based on what they are using, how much they are using. That's based on consumption, right? Similarly, at the security level, the whole authorization may, may vary uh, for, from application to application or from customer to customer. And at the core application level, um, right from the whole branding part of it, uh, like I said, it, if you are dealing with multi-org units uh, or if you are an enterprise with uh, multiple acquisitions, so there could be several um, group companies or child companies within them. So the whole uh, branding becomes important there. So that same application has to be branded um, to be able to meet the individual company uh, requirements. So that support should be there. And, and the whole uh, customization aspects related to the business logic, uh, the field level 
um, usage within these applications, right? So, for example, when you are multi-regional, um, the whole um, business logic may change from, uh, let's say, for example, from US, let's say it's a task, tax calculation you are doing, it changes from US to, let's say, to UK or, or uh, in Australia, right? So, the whole thing changes. So, which means your business logic should be configurable uh, to be able to meet that. So, that's just an example of it. So those are some of the key things at the application level. At the reporting level also, you need to have both box reporting as well as ad hoc reporting capabilities, which will help uh, meet some of the uh, customer requirements. And at the database level, uh, you need the flexibility to isolate the data. Uh, for example, you may have all the US West related uh, data grouped under one database or, or one entity and then all the east related could be separate or it could be by region or sometimes it could even be between company to company so two uh, companies within the same group company group may don't want the data to be overlapped between them so so at the database level also you need that capability so what we are talking here is about when you talk about configurability these are the various layers and the various aspects within those layers to be taken care of so this is an example of uh, where multi-tenancy comes in enterprises. Um, so we talked about this uh, scenario, like for example, let's take it's a quote management portal. Right? Um, so it could be used by a company called an enterprise called XYZ, right? We're just taking pseudo name. So XYZ Inc. US becomes one uh, primary tenant, right? So which is going to use this particular application. Um, and within US, you have something called a Seattle. You may have a branch office in Seattle, let's say, and then you have one in New Jersey. Um, and in Seattle, you may have one or more offices within that. And similarly, in New Jersey, you may have one or more. Uh, so the whole tree, if you look at a single organization now has a tree kind of a structure. Now, the moment you have something like this and you want the application to be able to be operated at the lowest level, right? So which means you should be able to operate at, uh, let's say, Seattle level, you may want to operate at even further down. Then the application should be designed for such kind of a usage. And multi-tenancy is an architectural pattern that will help you achieve that goal. Right? Now, this is something that uh, enterprises have started using more. Um, this is a uh, multi-tenancy is pretty much used in in case of SaaS applications, but then the the requirement in enterprises are also evolving, uh, which is uh, making it uh, more effective to apply the same multi-tenancy between uh, enterprises as well. So this is a traditional model of uh, how the applications were dealing with in the uh, past. Like you have, let's say, the code of that particular entity, the settings, the files, and data all connected uh, under one particular entity and you just replicate that entity. Right? That's a traditional model. There is a multi-tenancy, you try to break that and uh, instead you start grouping them. For example, at a database level, if you look at, you, you have database that can hold information about tenant one, tenant two, tenant three, and tenant is basically anything that can represent a customer or an organization or a part of the organization, right? So in case of the earlier example we saw, so it could be simply um, Seattle as a tenant, and New Jersey could be another tenant, right? and, and uh, anything under New Jersey again could further get created as a tenant. So under each layer, you start identifying or grouping tenant, uh, which gives that flexibility. So moving on, this is some of the governance related uh, aspects that needs to be taken care of uh, when you are talking about a digital management application platform. So, so far we talked about uh, the, the development part of it, like the accelerator and how do you build applications faster, but governance is something that's going to help you manage these applications, regardless of how many you are building, right? So some of the key aspects here could be um, like maintaining uh, service configurations or a service templates, which will define how the, the applications or uh, the services are being exposed maintaining a catalog of it, uh, monitoring the usage of these applications and APIs, 
Uh, some of the events that are happening within these applications can get tracked. Uh, the whole health monitoring aspect can be brought into it. How do you manage the data partitioning aspects, um, branding related things? So this portal, the governance portal, should have all these capabilities that can give that power for IT to get a single pane view and be able to control the applications across the enterprises. The third is the security we saw earlier. So security, like you discussed, should be able to offer all the capabilities like single sign-on, federation, or being able to integrate with a third-party system and uh, multi-factor authentication, MFA. And more importantly, it should be able to provide insights on what's happening, like user activity audits, can throw some light around how the users are using the system. Um, more importantly, the, the role in privilege management um, will, will determine what a user can do and cannot do. So it could be either at a user level, at a, at a tenant level, subtenant level, like we, from the earlier example. So these are some of the very important aspects from a security standpoint. Last is the monetization piece. So it should be able to offer your services, group them, and then being able to offer as a package to your customers, be able to define a price plan for your service, being able to meet up the consumption of your service, and then being able to create invoices based on the consumption on the period selected. Could be monthly, could be um, bi-weekly or be bi-monthly. So depending on that, the invoicing and the, the whole payment, if you're automating that as well, um, could be uh, done uh, within this particular segment. So that forms the monetization piece of it. So with that, we will uh, move on to the second part of uh, today's session where we will show you a small uh, demo of some of the features we talked about, right? We talked about the four areas of accelerator, governance, security, and monetization. So I'm going to have Logesh take over and show you a quick uh, demo of how some of these features could be dealt with. Over to you, Lokesh. Thanks, Janaki. So, uh, Janaki gave us an, you know, an overview about what Upload is and what features does it offers and all things. So, what I will be doing today is like walk you through some of those features what Janaki has explaining so far, right? So, what we are looking at currently is the Visual Studio uh, Development Editor. And the solution opened is the boilerplate solution. So one focus area of upload is the development acceleration, right? So out of box in the development accelerator piece, the boilerplate sol solution comes with it. So the boilerplate solution is an uh, .NET Core 2.0 based uh, application. So which comes with some set of base libraries. So which takes care of those uh, the base architectural best practices implementation for any credit operation for a business entity and as well as it comes with other libraries like you know uh, logging uh, distributed caching mechanisms and uh, exception handlings and other plumbing layers right so uh, what makes this uh, solution more powerful is like this is being built on a stateless api uh, api based architecture it makes it more scalable and then uh, uh, we also provide an angular based template angular 5 based template for the uh, front end right so uh, also we provide some of the code templates so which janik was mentioning as the code generators along with this package so you will be able to use those templates to generate the codes based on the base layers which we offer right for example i'm using one of the template to create some set of files for the entity called incident what it would do is it would scaffold into different files that would be based on the architecture which we have configured in this boilerplate solution so if you look at this so this has generated a lot of files with the entity incident so it has an incident incident set incident repository incident service and all these being inheriting the base services which we offer with this base solution right so the base solution uh, the, the boilerplate solution itself is an accelerator which is being powered by the digital management platform we will log in into the digital management platform now and we will look at it how we can configure the application govern and maintain the applications which we built using this boilerplate solutions
I'm logging in as a root administrator within the digital platform. So all you could see here is the different applications which is being already provisioned in the platform, right? So the first step to govern an application is to register the application within the platform. You could register an application here with some basic information like the application code, name and other details. And you could also specify the application structure. So which is nothing but the set of modules and features which we offer as part of the application. You could see for example, price code application. So we have created different modules like manage proposals, manage products. And each of these modules could intake features within the, so a manage proposal module intent takes the code and CPQ statistics as the features. So each feature could again take some set of privileges. View code, add code, edit code could be some set of privileges which is being assigned for the feature code, right? And also we have we can define the different usage parameters for each modules the usage parameters are nothing but the params using which we would be charging our customers if you are looking for a monetization aspect of the applications so the for example the total codes here is the usage parameter based on which the customers who are consuming this application will be charged so being said that once we configure the application structure, so we could go ahead and create different editions of the applications. So uh, by editions, we mean the different packages. So the packages can take different modules and features within them. So we could group those modules and features under each packages. So these packages would in turn be subscribed by the customers. And also to be noted that each package could take some set of price plans. So each price plan can have again some set of slab rates based on the usage parameters. For example, in our case, total quotes was one of our usage parameter. What we could do is we could go ahead and specify the slab rates for the usage parameters. So once we define the packages and price plans, we could onboard our customers into the applications. We could onboard the customers by subscribing to the different applications, which is being integrated with the upload platform. You will be able to see all the applications available and we would be able to subscribe to the applications which we require. We are choosing the packages and price plans and we are subscribing to that particular application. So being said that, you know, like the next aspect of upload would be like, you know, the security. So uh, the security starts with the user management, right? So what we could do is we could go ahead and create users and map the roles to users. So each user could take n number of roles and those roles will in turn take some set of privileges. So the roles again is based on the applications. So each applications could have some set of roles. And when we are assigning the roles to the users, it would be based on the applications to which the tenant, the, the user has been subscribed to. For example, for this particular user, he could subscribe, he has subscribed to four applications, price code, mineral processing and risk administration. So he will be able to choose the roles from those applications. And then, so there are other modules which is provided by the upload platform. For example, notifications. So the notifications which is sent as email or SMS out from our applications can be configured within the upload platform. So each of these notifications again take a template which is local based and dynamic in nature, right? And also we have a complete event management system events are nothing but the business events which is being raised at any part any point in the application so you could configure those events based on the applications and uh, to be noted that like all these notifications and events are being audited and can be governed within the upload platform itself right. so 
So this is one of the sample notification that has been sent out. And similarly for the events. And we do also have a workflow where you could create simple workflows using the drag and drop controls what we provide and make it dynamic in nature based on the conditions you could configure in the platform itself. The conditions could be a task condition or it could be in code condition, etc. And also the events what we create could be hooked back to the workflows. So on occurrence of an event, it could be triggering a workflow which will go through the some set of tasks based on the conditions configured. And then we have other, uh, you know, uh, govern, uh, governance related features within the platform, like uh, the product usage. So what we call as product analytics, where you would be able to track down all the requests that's being made to the application with the, you know, with the IP address, how much time it took for that request to be responded. And uh, if there is any spike burst in the application loads, you will be able to monitor it here and you will be able to take actions necessarily. And we have the usage based reports. And similarly, there are some other reports like the dashboards where you would be able to monitor all your customers, uh, their uh, invoices and other things. Right. So that's pretty much about the uh, second part of the today's session. So where uh, we look at the development accelerator boilerplate solution and some of the features which is part of the upload digital management platform. Thanks, Janaki. Over to you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Lokesh. I think with that, uh, we'll just wrap with uh, taking a quick look at the benefits from having a digital service platform. So let me start up, started with uh, the application diversification. So one of the key advantages with the platform approach would be the application standardization, which makes it much more easier to manage uh, the applications down the line. So that's a very big advantage that you get out of it. Of course, the, uh, the indirect result of that would be the reduced IT workload. So IT will have a much better control on managing these applications through the governance portals that are being offered. And since the applications follow certain guidelines, it becomes easier to manage these applications. Um, the whole thing enables um, to be agile, to meet the, the business goals, with the changes that might happen at the business level as well. And the, the application the accelerator that we talked about can really help improve the productivity of developers and developers just focus only on the business functionality rather than worrying about any of the other aspects. And the monetization piece can really open up a revenue stream for enterprises. As well as these, the single pane administration um, allows a great level of uh, control for the IT teams to get a holistic view at the same time being able to operate it. And this whole thing boils down to uh, being able to operate IT in a more efficient and cost-effective manner. So that is another uh, big advantage of this platform. So with that, uh, we come to the end of uh, this session. Um, so feel free to type in any questions you have. And uh, we have uh, only a few minutes left to take up any uh, questions that you may have. Okay, so we, we have a question around uh, uh, what kind of an ROI can be expected uh, from having a digital management platform. Huh. That's a very uh, interesting and very valid question because looking at uh, the components that are involved in a, a digital management platform, uh, if an enterprise is going to build such a platform, 
then obviously it's going to consume a lot of effort and uh, uh, cost and budget and time frame and hence ROI may not be that attractive but if uh, enterprises are going to adopt any of the existing digital management platforms like the upload itself then the ROI could be as uh, early as probably six months right so less than six months could be uh, a good enough time period for them to recover the, the investments that they may make on such a platform. The other question that has come up is, um, so what kind of a cloud is being supported through this platform? Um, so the one that we demonstrated is, is something that is uh, built in a, in a cloud neutral manner. So like one of the key aspects we believe is being able to uh, not rely on one particular technology. So uh, it's basically a cloud neutrality is what uh, we have brought in there. So you'll be able to operate it in any any cloud uh, today as well as tomorrow. So it's, it's quite uh, transferable from one cloud to another cloud. Um, so Lokesh, there is a question for you. Um, how, how quickly can an application be built using the accelerator uh, that you demonstrated? So can you can you take take that one, Lokesh? Yeah, sure. sure. So uh, with uh, building an application, so uh, normally what it takes is to create and implement the CRUD operation for an entity would take less than five minutes using the ball code generator what we have. And it, it depends upon the, the number of entities and uh, the complexity of the uh, nature, uh, the nature of the applications, the uh, the time it would take to build the applications uh, would vary. But then on an average, so with the uh, with our experiences, uh, what we could say is like uh, an application could be built and uh, uh, being taken to production within uh, an eight weeks of time. Thanks, Lokesh. All right, I think uh, that's all we have for today. And once again, thanks everyone for taking the time to join the session. Hope you found it useful. And we look forward to see you again soon uh, in our next webinar as well. All right. Thank you. Bye.